Hey guys, Mark Howe here, and welcome back to the long-awaited Vice Build Part 4. Okay, now before we can even start clamping this vise down to the milling table, we're going to have to get it flat. So to start with, I don't have a belt sander or a disc sander which would be ideal for this. So here I am draw filing the vise down, and then I've got a little bit of an unconventional way to make sure that this is a good level of flatness before I bolt it down to the table. You'll see that in the next bit here. Okay guys, so a quick word. This is not the perfect way to do this method. Yes, this mail table is worse than the dark side of the moon and looks like Swiss cheese. But as a rough estimate of how to get the space sitting flat to machine the top side, this is gonna have to do. This is already after a few passes of scraping, sanding, filing, deburring. I'm already significantly reducing the rock that this thing has. Okay, so I have two axis marks over here. One and two. And this is the axis over which the vice wants to rock. So somewhere in the middle, we should expect to find our high points and then we need to scrape those down. This is not an exhaustive scraping channel, but here I am trying because I need to square up this vice so that once this bottom face is nice and flat, I can deck the top, rough machine it, flip it over and then rough machine and finish machine the base, then I can turn the vise back around and finish machine the top. Then we should be able to be ready for surface grinding or hand scraping later on. Now let's see how this turned out. Okay, so let's take a look. We have quite a pronounced little high spot over here, another one over here, and another one over here. That is pretty good because previously we had quite a high spot here in the middle, like right about here and I've been working that down. So now it's spread out to the two sides. So I've got a bit of a hollow and two little peaks where this valley is. And again over here, because this point here and this point here were two significant high spots. Okay, I am by no means a scraping expert. So I take everything I do here with a pinch of salt. Okay, so I've learned a couple things about scraping. One of them has been exactly why scraping is a dying art. That said though, I have now got this vice base to the point where it no longer has a rock. Yes, it's not touching the table on this side and on that side, but along this middle section, I have managed to get it to a stable point where it has enough support to not rock. Okay, unless you hit it really hard. But we're about to turn this over and see how the prints turned out. Got a little high spot over here, high spot over there, high spot over here. Now I'm not really looking for a full scraping pattern as you'd expect to see on scraping videos. I am just trying to eliminate that rock. The fact that these little points are more distributed and not just in one giant clump over here and over here means that I'm getting at least a couple points touching the table, which is fine because I'm gonna be clamping this down and then machining the top and then coming back and machining the bottom. In comparison, this is what the top of the vise now sounds like. And this is what the bottom sounds like. Not hard to do if that was a machine surface, but since this was rough cast and then a grinder was taken to it, I think this is pretty good. Okay guys, so now that we have swept this in and gathered some values, we can draw some pretty cool insights. Now over here we have zero across both landings. That indicates that the wear in the machine is pretty okay and that the head is well trammed across this distance. But over here we start to pick up some negative numbers, which means in relative terms these are closer to the table. And over here are some higher numbers. Negative numbers means this side was obviously higher towards the cutter, so more of it got cut away 
and this side was lower and further away, so less of it got cut away. So obviously when I clamped the vise, even though I had shims underneath the rough casting and should have helped counteract the clamping forces, obviously they still came into play. If we swap over the vise, a little bit of a rock, but over here where this was a little bit low. So I'm hoping that once we machine the side and then machine the top again, we should be in a pretty good spec of parallelism and we should be on our way. All right, now for this next part, we're gonna need to hold the vise down to the table directly. And I actually realized that once again, these little holes in the side of the vise really do have more than one purpose. They are quite nifty and honestly, they were a lifesaver. Then I put a clamp in the middle T section of the vise, held that down, and now we can get full access to the top without any clamps on top. And here in this shot, you can see the gap that I still had to work with. It was about a mil in some places that we had to take off. Next, we're gonna take this opportunity while the vise is upside down to just machine the sides. This will allow us not only to clean it up and make it look better, but to have a straight reference if we ever need to come back to this point. Spoiler, we actually <laughs> really did have to come back to that point, so it came in handy. But anyway, the next part here is gonna be fly cutting the bottom of the vise, and this was a little bit more turbulent than I thought it would be. At first, I tried cutting with my carbide insert, my lathe turning tool, but then I switched to high-speed steel just so I could have a better nose radius and a larger cutting diameter, but this also was not great. I had to run it much slower, and this was not a happy cut. So a couple things. One, this blank of high-speed steel is not the greatest quality. I've been using it because it's what I had on hand that was long enough to give me the greatest width of cut. However, as I push this to higher speeds, it actually burns out and dulls the tip so you have a lighter cut as it goes along. Secondly, I don't know if you guys can pick this up, but I am getting a bit more of a step. I've done this vise in two passes with this choked up a little bit more, and I'm getting a step of about 10 microns but I am going to strike down the setup and quickly retram the nod and check the side-to-side the -side tram of the mill head. So not particularly pleased about that, but you got to do what you got to do to get what you want to get. Okay guys, a bit of a change of plan. When I had flipped the vise, I realized what a beautiful surface finish this cheap import face mill had actually left. So I've trammed the head in nod and in tilt pretty damn well. So I'm gonna see if I can't replicate the same surface finish and hopefully the same flatness with the face mill. I know it's not ideal. Technically you'd want a chonker and technically you'd want something the width of the part to take it in one cut. Let's see if I get better results. Let's oil up the machine and get to it. All right, so switching back to the face mill definitely did give a much better surface finish. The only problem, as I'm sure you can imagine, is that this requires me to do a lot more passes. And with a lot more passes, you introduce the possibility for a lot more things to go wrong. In this case, what I thought was just the tram of the head being slightly off actually ended up being the wear in the y-axis of the mill table. This is not uncommon for older machines, but as you move to the extremities, you sort of end up with a cradle effect where the ends lift up or drop down. So knowing this, I decided to move the ram of the mill further forward to work in the sweet spot or the low spot of the wear in that y-axis. But I probably should have trammed the mill again here because when I started going back to cut it, I ended up with worse steps than before. So that was a bit of a fail. You can clearly see in this shot that the steps have gone worse than before. So what followed next was me striking down the setup again, tightening all the gibs in the X, Y, and Z axes so I didn't have any slop, and re-tramming the head once again before putting it back on and trying to fly cut it. I was getting desperate at this stage. Now I don't know how many high-end vices you've been lucky enough to look underneath, but I'm pretty sure they look nothing like this one with this giant step in the middle. That small fly cutter is just not gonna cut it with the wear in my mill. Now in addition to that step, the surface finish is okay, it's possible, but I also have these voids in the casting. I'm gonna fill those up with steel epoxy so that when I do a final finishing cut, those will be nice and flat and smooth as well. Now those of you who have a fear of fly cutters should probably look away now. 
And that is because of this. This is my new insert tool holder for the fly cutter. Now I did make this while you guys weren't looking to save some time, but it is basically just a beefier holder with a face mo insert over here, scallop cut in the back. This should allow me to get the vise in one pass and provided I am in the flat spot of wear and the mill is trammed in nicely, I think that should be our final cut. Anyway, fingers crossed and let's try it out. Okay, so while we are waiting for this cut to finish, why don't you guys go ahead and click the like button and the subscribe button and leave me a comment if you want. Shameless plug, I know. But nevertheless, this was a really long cut. In fact, I had to counterbalance the weight of the table itself because it used up so much of the travel on the mill table. The overhang was actually almost a problem and I think we're going to be dealing with that in the next episode. But yeah, now for the fun part of machining the slots that are going to allow us to clamp the vise down to the table. We're going to start by first spot drilling and then drilling out the bolt holes first. That will allow us to not have to end mill into a dead end. So one, that's better positional accuracy and two, a better surface finish at the very ends of those slots. Next, we're going to give them a quick chamfer and then we can take the full width of cut in two different passes. I did go back though and just finish off the ends of these cuts to give them a better surface finish before giving them a nice little deburr and a chamfer after doing all of that math. And then we are done with the bottom of the vise. And that is looking resplendent if I do say so myself. There were quite a few hurdles along the way, but the surface finish came out great. Those voids now got a chance to be filled in. There are a few marks here and there. It's not strictly perfect, but we are going to be doing a bit of work to this vise further in the next episode. So I hope you'll stick around for the next episodes to come. I have been your host, Mark Howe, and thank you so much for watching. Take care, guys. I'll see you in the next one.